everyone. This is Jill. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. Seneca. I've mentioned previously that when I was a kid, my life was filled with chaos. There were people who gave in to every whim, people who couldn't control their fears or negative thoughts, people who decided that they should blame everyone else in the world for their woes. And there was a general dislike of anything that was considered a virtue. It's interesting that I would become so attracted to the philosophy of Stoicism that early on. When I was young, I learned about the Greeks and I appreciated a lot of their philosophy. Nothing to excess was something that really stood out to me. All I saw around me was excess, anger, booze, blame, vice. But Stoicism really taught me to put life back into balance and to fight off all the things that I saw around me. This is a very brief overview of modern Stoicism, and it's built on top of Greek and Roman philosophy. And we're going to cover a lot of different topics when it comes to two different books that talk about Stoicism and how it can help us now. One of my first steps was a fellow named Wayne Dyer. He would take to late night fundraisers, also called telethons, and he would read parts of his book. He would answer questions from people in the audience. But he gave some piece of advice that stuck with me even when I was very young. He talked about how you should not let people push your buttons. When someone pushes your button, you don't have to automatically react in the way that they hope for you to do that. That's on them. He gives this analogy of a person who squeezes an orange and what comes out of the orange is orange juice because that was what was inside the orange. The person who did the squeezing did evoke the orange juice coming out of the orange but the orange juice is what came out. So if someone pushes your buttons or squeezes you, so to speak, what comes out of you is what was inside of you. They instigated it, but it came out of you. If you're full of love and forgiveness and positivity, hate and anger and despair doesn't come out of you. And that's where you have to reframe this person who is pushing your buttons. It came at one point that my dad was trying to push certain people's buttons and it struck me after reading the Wayne Dyer book and seeing him on television that he wants to push your buttons. So why would you allow that to happen? Because then he wins. And if all you do is figure out a way of not letting him push your buttons, he looks like the person who's hurt, who's bitter, who's angry. If they see it doesn't work, they'll eventually stop. Stoicism is something, like I said, I've been following for a long time. I just didn't know that it was called Stoicism, primarily because when you think of Stoics, you think of someone telling you, quit complaining, just stand there and take it. That is really not what Stoicism is. And that's what we're going to talk about today is what really is Stoicism and how it can make you happy, make you stronger and make you take on the goals that you really want to achieve. I'm a Christian, and so there are some major differences between Christianity and Stoicism. Paul spoke the language of the Romans quite well. He was a Roman citizen himself. And so when he talks, oftentimes you see him talking in a way that they would understand. Paul, in the letter to the Philippians, said, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. That's a very stoic kind of message coming from St. Paul. There was an interesting podcast called Hidden Brain, and the interviewer talked to a fellow named William Irvine. William Irvine wrote two books, The Stoic Challenge, A Philosopher's Guide to Becoming Tougher, Calmer, and More Resilient, and A Guide to the Good Life, The Ancient Art of the Stoic. He also has a website and does a lot of public speaking. During this interview, he talked about if you had a roommate who walked out of their room every so often and told you what a failure you are, or told you how you should be resentful, or told you that you should be afraid because things that you're afraid of will happen, and you should be prepared for the very worst, we would kick that person out of our house. It is not someone we would want to live with, yet our brain does this to us all the time. And that's what we have to take hold of. 
The interesting thing, they talk about the movie Groundhog's Day, which is one of my favorite movies, but as a stoic message. They talk about how Phil, the main character, has to live his life over and over and over again until he can capture his bad attitude, his emotions, and then take control of the things that he can take control of. That's stoicism. During this interview, he says it is the middle way, that it's not about hedonism or barebone existence. It's not about optimism or pessimism. He breaks things into, first of all, things that you have control over and things that you don't have control over. He says that you do have control over your values, your thoughts, your reactions. And then in those places where you have a little bit of control, you should go after those things key things that you can, and then don't judge yourself based on whether you won, but only on based on if you did your best. Looking at it afterwards and trying to analyze what you could have done that was better and what you did that was right so that the next time you can do even better. William Irvine suggests putting things into perspective, and he gave some stories about some tough times and and people who came back from tough situations. He talks about understanding that the situation you're in compared to the situation people have been in throughout history can give you a little bit of perspective. Then he talks about how we have this immune system in our body, but now that we have to train our emotional immune system, and that means enduring hardships, small setbacks. He even mentions putting yourself through mild discomfort, which he suggests instead of driving your car someplace, walk there or use your bike. Maybe take a cold shower or stop eating something that you really love to eat just to give yourself a little bit of toughness. The more that we take on some of these tough things and challenges in our life, the better able we'll be to take on big challenges when they come our way. When a pipe breaks in your house, it's not the broken pipe that's the problem. It's the water that comes out of the pipe that becomes the problem. You know, sometimes we see that too when it comes to allergies, right? Allergies are just our body fighting off this invading pollen. The thing that our histamine system does is it makes us stuffy. It produces all these white blood cells and we feel terrible, but it's not the pollen that's making us feel terrible. It's the fight against the pollen. And so he said, that's exactly what's happening too, is that it's not so much when we hit adverse times or a bad situation happens that does the damage. It does damage. It will do its own set of damage. But it's the damage that you do yourself in that event that makes it so much worse. And the other important thing when it comes to stoicism, according to this book, is that you don't let things or people push your buttons. It's the same thing as we were talking about earlier, that if someone's trying to push your button, don't let them. Figure out a calm way of dealing with them. He says that if someone says something really rude to him, he will just go on as if that person never even said it. And you can see that that person who said that hurtful thing start to squirm. And then they may even say it again. And you say, yeah, I heard you the first time. And then they just get frustrated. They look like a fool. They realize they haven't hurt you. And they didn't get a chance to push your buttons. But stoicism goes into even other things. Like money, money can't make you happy. Money is neither good nor bad, but what it does to your well-being can be good or bad. So don't let money push your buttons. Don't let food push your buttons. If you are just addicted to some kinds of food, go without that. You're trying to get to this point where you're in control of your emotions and you're in control of your feelings. And so that you don't have those things pushing that button that says you must eat this thing right now. You crave this thing right now and said you're in control, not it being in control. Zervine talks about how what makes us really unhappy is not so much that we don't have this or we don't have that situation or we never achieved a certain thing. It's about this gap of thinking we want something and not having that thing we want. And so you can reduce that unhappiness in two different ways. The first way is you get what you want, but you'll find out at some point that it is not the dream you thought it was, that you'll want something else after that point. And then you realize that the problem is the fact that you have that gap. 
when you learn to love the things and the place and the people you're with now, you'll never have that extreme gap of, I wish I was over there. Certainly having increased wealth or a different home or a different car or more friends could make you happy, but that yearning that you have inside of you or that feeling that you have inside of you that those things will solve your life, they're wrong. There was a famous quote by Jim Carrey, and he said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that it's not the answer. And so you can understand that we all believe that there's this magic thing out there, that if we only had that, that's the thing that would make us happy. And what we have to realize is that we are happy. We can be happy with the things that we have right now, with the place that we have right now. That doesn't mean you don't fight for other things in your life and then you don't fight for those other successes that you want to have, but you don't put all that emotion on top of them so that if you don't get it, you will be upset. Or if you do get it and it doesn't turn out to be what you thought it was, that there's no negative emotion that's there. Talks too about removing the negative emotion. And this is important that you're not just going, oh, well, something horrible happened. I guess I'm just going to have to do better the next time. And having this fake positive moment. Don't swallow the issues. Don't turn them off. That's impossible. It will lead us to having mental health issues if we constantly bury bad things in us. This is about reframing it. It's a little bit like that Wayne Dyer story I told at the beginning. You think about that person and what a horrible life they're having that they feel like they must push your button. Or that person is hurting me because they're really hurting inside or because of the things that happened in their life. That's what you have to do to just reframe the situation so that you can take it on in a calm demeanor. Maybe you'll say, okay, I tried something new. It really fell apart. This is not my thing. At least I learned something. Whatever it is, but you don't bury the issue. You reframe it into a way that you can actually deal with it instead of just being negative about it. He does another exercise to help us realize that, again, the people and the things around us are on loan to us. What would it mean if the people in our lives didn't exist or if the things that we really enjoy about our lives weren't here? And it'll help us understand what really matters to us. Try to think about it, but don't dwell on it. Another fellow wrote a book called How to Be a Stoic, Using Ancient Philosophy to Live a Modern Life by Massimo Pigalucci, and I hope I said his name right. But he talks about some other concepts in Stoicism that I think were valuable when taking a look at this kind of philosophy. Epictetus, who we talked about in the Serenity Prayer podcast, said that we should always take a moment before reacting. And we think about that in times you hear people will say, go for a walk around the block, count to 10. But it's always important that whenever we deal with some sort of issue or provocation that we do so calmly with that emotion taken out. He also talks about existing in the here and now as being a part of stoicism. That means giving up living in the past. Don't keep dreaming about the future. It's fine to have plans. It's time to reflect, but don't live there. You've met people, I'm sure, in your life who just had this period of their life they can't get over, either for good or for bad, and they're stuck there in this time. He mentioned that beginning of every day, Marcus Aurelius had this strategy where he reminded himself of the things that he's probably going to encounter. He realized that there were a lot of angry people, stressed out, impatient, ungrateful people during his coming day. He also said that people who are going to come to me who are angry, it's it's not their fault. They're just mistaken in what they're thinking. I'm going to try to help come to a place where we can talk about this and come to some agreement. He always started every day by talking himself through the very hard things that he's going to have to deal with for the rest of the day. Seneca talked about at night, looking back at your day and reflecting on, you know, what went right? What made you irritated? Where did you lose control? Did you get angry at any point? Did someone get a bad emotion from you? And maybe they didn't deserve it, or maybe they did deserve it, but they shouldn't have been responded to in that way. By noting his mistakes that he had at the end of every day, he'll be able to do better the next day. 
I've mentioned this before, that at the beginning of work, I like to think about the thing I need to do and get done and the attitude I have to have. And then at the end of every day of work, I try to reflect on what went right, what went wrong, what could I have done better, and what should I do tomorrow? I do the same thing at the beginning and end of every day. So those are two concepts that were in this book. I think they're really helpful. So as you can see, there's a lot of stoicism built into the modern productivity movement. And I'll tell you, too, that everybody has a different take on it. We covered a lot of topics that went by very quickly. But this is just to give you a taste into two people's opinions about modern stoicism. Summary. Make sure you take into account the things you can change, the things that you can't change, and figure out what things you should do about the things you can change. Two, make sure that you build up an immune system of your emotions, that you are able to fight back anything that tries to make you upset, angry, have negative emotions, and how you can reframe anything that is negative into something that you can deal with and work with. Three, try to forget about the gaps between what you want and what you don't have, and instead look at everything around you as a gift. That doesn't mean you give up on your goals but it also means becoming content with the things around you. Or don't let anything push your buttons. Not money, not food, not people. Five, learn to appreciate the people and the things around you so that you really understand what richness they have brought to your life. And that sometimes things can be temporary and that you should appreciate them right now. Six, come up with a pattern of reflecting at the beginning of the day of the tough things that you're going to have to face and then reflect at night on how well you did. Challenge. Find one thing in your life that really pushes your buttons, whether it's a thing or a person, and learn how you can reframe what it is they do to you so that they no longer have power to change your emotions or make you angry or upset. Now we have our quote of the day. This comes from Phil in Groundhog's Day. When Chekhov saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. But standing here among the people of Punxsutawney and basking in the warmth of their hearths and hearts, I couldn't imagine a better fate than a long and lustrous winter. From Punxsutawney, It's Phil Connors. So long. It's really interesting to see in this movie how he started his day where he hated everyone. He hated the town. He hated his job. He hated the people around him. And he had this bad attitude about everything. But by the end, he gave this speech that even winter would be great with the people and the place around him. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Please remember to tell a friend about this podcast, subscribe, and leave a review. If you have anything that you want to say to me, if there's a question that you have or a comment that you have or you think I'm full of baloney, feel free to tell me. All the ways that you can contact me are at my website.